Get the popcorn, Frank. Coming, dear. We tell you to cover your mirrors. Because when a person with dementia sees their reflection, it scares them. They don't know who that is. They think that's a stranger. It does. One of the things that, especially out now as we're heading into the holiday season, sleigh bells, we tell you to put a bell on the doors that lead to the outside. So when that person may open that door, you'll hear those bells and you're like, okay, I have to go run. Sleigh bells are wonderful. I actually have them on my doors. Um, we, glass doors. We tell you to put decals or cover them with curtains because, again, the, the reflection of the glass door will be scary and, or they may not be able to see that it's a glass door. And we tell you to put the decals at their eye level so they'll see something and they'll stop. And then the other thing is to, and, and to put your, um, your coats and your keys, move them away. Don't put them by the front door. Don't give them cues that maybe they can go outside. Windows. You can get limiting bars on windows. Um, have a, and make and practice an escape plan for fires. Make sure you have battery or hardwired smoke and CO2 detectors everywhere. Cover your outlets. Same with with your kid. It also will help prevent heat loss from your house. In your laundry, in your kitchen, in your laundry, um, you can contact your local <coughs> service provider for gas or electric and have them put automatic shutoffs. Um, and or breakers that you can actually turn off. Unplug all your small appliances, your microwave. If a person with dementia goes to try to use it and it doesn't work, they'll stop. They won't even think twice about it. Install childproof lashes on your stovetop, on your refrigerator, on things uh, that you don't want somebody going into. Install locks on all cabinets that have breakables, cleaning products, medications, alcohol, matches, knives, sharp utensils, plastic bags, and the all-famous family junk drawer. Because somebody with dementia will open a drawer and maybe eat a pencil, because they're not even thinking that that's not something that's appropriate to do. We tell you to remove or lock all hand tools, power tools, guns, machinery. Keep them in a locked garage, a locked basement, shed, whatever you have, or remove them, give them away. Stairs. It'd be great to be able to have a handrail on both sides of the stairs if you can do it. If you can't, have at least one working handrail. Make sure it's secure into the, into the staircase. Put a gate at the bottom at the top of the stairs. In your bathroom, one of the things we truly recommend for somebody who has dementia, when you have an all-white toilet with an all-white toilet seat, they don't see that. They don't understand. So if you put a different color toilet seat, they'll understand, OK, that's the toilet I need to sit. This is where I need to go. Aim. In the bathroom, install grab bars. That's just a given. I'm a proponent of grab bar installation. Um, remove all medications, cleaning products from your bathrooms. Remove hair dryers, electric razors, things of that nature. Um, label your hot and cold. You can buy little labels for your hot and cold so the person knows. Label your shampoo with conditioner so they'll understand that that's what you need to use. We also recommend if you still do have a tub, put a foam spout on the head so that if a person does either slip or fall, they're not going to hit their head and get hurt. Um, and we also recommend anti-scald devices so that when you turn that water on to hot and they may forget it, it's only going to come to a certain temperature and stop. They're not going to burn themselves. And as we get older, our skin gets frailer. And so what is hot to one person may not be as hot to another person. And so an anti-scald device can be set to a temperature and move forward. Lighting. We also recommend night lights everywhere. When you're traveling down a path, it's nice to have, like a runway for an airplane, it's nice to have your, your way um, lit for you. We want to reduce glare. As Tammy was saying, that glare on a floor may look like it's wet to somebody with dementia. So you want to reduce glare as much as possible. 
You want to make sure you install adequate lighting, inside lighting, both at your entryways, your exitways, and your pathways. If a person is allowed to smoke in your home, we suggest that you truly monitor that smoking because you don't want to have an event that you're not planning for. Remove matches. If you remove their cigarettes, their matches, their lighters, they may forget that they want to smoke. And so you'll help them <laughs> health-wise as well. We tell you to put red tape around floor registers because the red is a signal to stop and that way they won't put their feet on top of it and get maybe possibly burnt. Eliminate trippable hazards. Don't have your hose in the walkway as you're climbing up to the stairs. Um, secure your gates, your pools, your sheds, your charcoal gas grills your, and gas grills. Keep your trash bins covered. People with dementia don't understand that that's, you know, some place that you really shouldn't go and they may, you might find them eating out of that trash bin. Remove spoiled food from the refrigerator because their sense of smell is going. So they're not going to understand that that milk is like three weeks old and it's bad. So just remove it from your refrigerator. And keep small pets out of your walkways. That's I never thought you could do that in Tammy. <laughs> We're <laughs> just about done. <laughs> Last but not least, as Tammy said, people may wander. So a medical alert bracelet, a PERS, um, or what's known as personal emergency response system, like a life alert, that have GPS in them. Um, where did I go? Oh, and then the last, last two things is what's a wonderful idea as somebody who has dementia is a little treasure test of things that they can have, things that will be reminding of them, things that are special to them. And at the same time for the caregiver, a special place just for you. A room that you put a do not come into, do not disturb sign on that you can go into and just go, <sighs> take a breath and say, okay, I can face this another day. As, as you can tell, uh, Carol loves what she does. <laughs> know about this. I didn't have a chance to make a lot of them. It's from the yeah. NIH and we, it has a lot of great pictures. And we have some copies up here. Okay, well, we're going to be available. One, we're, but we're I gonna, can make more, send it to you on a PDF, whatever you need. So th I strongly recommend this to clients when they come in, right? Have Carol come over, have her and her husband look at your house, evaluate whether there are some improvements that you need. If there are big improvements that you need, um, and, you, and you're Frank and Mary and you're very concerned because you don't have a lot of cash, this is the time, and I tell, tell clients typically, this is the only time where you want to think about doing a reverse mortgage. Because if the goal of Frank and Mary is to stay in their house for the rest of their lives, and they want to make sure they can, and they don't feel they have the cat, and they're going to lose too much sleep if they don't have some cash in the bank too, then they should use the house to pay for those improvements. Reverse mortgages are relatively straightforward. The, 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 the reverse mortgage amount that you can get is based on the value of the house and your age. The older you are, the greater the percentage of the value of the house that you can get. So in Frank and Mary's case, with a house worth $400,000, um, they, they, can, they can probably get over $200,000 worth of money in the reverse mortgage. If they were getting that reverse mortgage, there's a significant upfront cost, but it's about half of what it used to be. It's, a, it's, a, it's around, in this, in this kind of case, $14,000, right? But all of that could be financed through the reverse mortgage. Um, it could use, if it were used for home modifications, in this situation, we were just giving the example, if there was a $400,000 home, the, the total line of credit that could, that could be obtained is $214,000. The payments don't have to get made every month. The, the re mortgage only becomes due after the two of them have died. It makes sense. I want to mention one other thing. There is also a mini reverse mortgage that is available practically for free. You get them, the, the agent in this area is SMOC, the South Middlesex Opportunity Council. Loans are up to $30,000, right? The income maximum for you is 200% is of the HUD median income guideline. Uh, it is not based on credit worthiness. It's just like reverse mortgages. Uh, you can get 0% zero, zero deferred payments depending on your income level, or, but no higher than 3% amortized payments. Uh, if you are, and, and those are the income guidelines, so if you're a family of two, if you're Frank and Mary, if you earn $75,000 a year, you're entitled to a 0% interest rate, 0% interest rate for up to $30,000 to get these kinds of modifications done. I know that we covered a lot here, but, but there's a lot to cover. 
Uh, my, the, 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 my, your takeaway from this should be, folk, you, you've got the information on the Alzheimer's Association, on Bay Path Elder Services. I've tried to introduce you to some people whose services I think are really important to you. Good luck in dealing with these issues. Thank you very much. We're happy to take any questions individually afterwards, but it's quarter past 10 and you need to go to your next assignment. Thank you, Thank you very much. <laughs>